Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Evelyn Simeon. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Political Science at the University of Connecticut. Um, I have no PowerPoint. I have no bells and whistles. Um, no fancy tables and numbers to share with you. But I do find the numbers to be striking. Not surprising, but striking. And it reminds me about the degree in which we are so grossly underrepresented, whether it be in the social sciences or the fields like engineering, mathematics, or physics. So when I was asked to participate in this panel, I did not hesitate. I did not pause to say yes. I'm excited um, just to be here and to have the opportunity to actually share with you my experience. In preparation for this panel, I came up with a two-fold strategy. First, I would actually pick up a copy of Telling Histories, Black Women Historians in the Ivory Tower for Inspiration. And as I thumbed through the book and began to read some of the chapters authored by the contributors, I was surprised, I was touched, I was inspired in many ways. And I thought to myself, could I be just that personal? Could I be that candid? Could I really sort of open up and be so forthright and forthcoming about my experience, at least in the discipline of political science? Because I thought a lot of the stories were pretty frank, pretty personal, and pretty candid. And so my second strategy was to actually go into my graduate seminar. I teach a graduate seminar entitled Black Feminist Theory and Politics. And I asked my students this question. I said, if you had a group of black women, a representative sample of black women in the academy, what questions would you ask them? What questions would you like to know the answer to? And so I'm going to start by sharing with you just a sample of some of the questions my graduate students came up with. I have about nine students enrolled in this graduate seminar, and they're coming from various disciplines, psychology, English literature, psych, um, sociology, history, um, human rights, you get the idea, including political science. So some of the questions that came up included, and this first question was rephrased time and time again. What role have you played applying, what role have you pl played and applying your knowledge beyond the ivory tower to communities of color. Why is there such a disconnect between academia and the real world? How can you take theories outside of institutional walls? Do you consider your scholarship to be a political act and or some form of activism? What is perhaps your biggest struggle in this moment in your career? How do you relate your teaching to your scholarship? What advice would you give a black woman climbing the stairs of the ivory tower? And what strengths do you fall on when you feel like life has gotten out of control? And so with those questions in mind, though I realize, given the time, I cannot possibly answer all of these questions. But I'm going to hit on, I'm going to attempt to hit on at least two from my perspective. And the first one, as it was repeated time and time again, what role have you, plot, have you played in applying your knowledge beyond the ivory tower to communities of color? I think this is a question I personally have asked myself over the years, both pre- and post-tenure? How do I make my research, my scholarship, accessible outside of the classroom? And so I find myself uh, presenting aspects, parts of my book to middle school children, high school students, community centers where my audience is not comprised of academics. Many in the audience may, be, um, may not have a college degree, and so I find myself um, most challenged, because I'm thinking about how do I 
make the numbers or do I just totally gut the regression tables, which I oftentimes do. And it forces me to actually be my best, I think, at what I do, and that is translating the work I do on African-American women in politics in such a way that an eighth grader can understand it, and that it's real. This question about why is there such a disconnect between academia and the real community, however you define community, there is no, in my mind, an incentive, particularly at a research one institution, there is no merit award for volunteerism and community work. And when there is service, the service is expected to be done within the context of your department on that university's campus, not beyond the walls of the ivory tower. And so it's something you do independent of your institution on your own time, knowing you will not be rewarded for it within the context of your job that is the ivory tower. So, the pressure is then to balance your time if you are so committed to community service. Um, during one of the breaks, someone who recognized me from undergrad walked up to me, and I went to school in New Orleans. I attended a historically black college, um, Xavier University of Louisiana, and she recognized me. And when I was an undergraduate at Xavier, I was very involved in community service, and I became a pro project um, director and I moved up to being chair of mobilization at Xavier, which was sort of comparable to being the president of student government, except you were the head of community service programs. And so since my undergraduate years, throughout graduate school to now, I've been involved in mentoring programs. One young girl, I participate in Big Brother, Big Sister. My little girl had a spelling bee competition this morning, and I had to tell her I couldn't make it because I, of course, was looking forward to this conference. But when I think about my commitment beyond my intellectual commitment and the way in which the university defines my role, they define our roles in terms of teaching, research, and service. But this opportunity to participate on this panel forced me to think about how do I conceive of my role, forget about the university, and I think of myself as Yes, a teacher. Yes, a scholar slash researcher. But I also think of myself as a mentor, an advisor, a role model, a volunteer. All these things. And when I think about how do I weigh these roles, I probably have a very different distribution than my university as it allocates um, certain percentages to research teaching, and service. Again, the challenge, at least at a research one university, is how do you commit to service and not compromise tenure and promotion? And so one of the questions asked was, what strengths do you fall on when you feel like life's out of control? Because when you're multitasking, and somebody like myself is trying to mentor or volunteer, I find myself very cognizant of every hour of the day. So when I drive to DeBerry Elementary School, it is two hours before my office hours start on Mondays. And I tell my students, you know, this Monday I'm participating in a program called Read Aloud. And so that's why my office hours start a bit later. And so I read to this fourth grade class. I leave the school and I show up in my office for office hours. My classes never start before 2 p.m. Besides that, I think you've got to find something that keeps you sane. And all of us have a hobby or something we would like to do. Some of these folks are on Facebook with me and they know <laughs> I'm going to spin class, I'm going to kickboxing, I'm going to drumline, and I have the three-package deal to Essence uh, this summer. So you've got to have these outlets, these moments 
that you let your hair down. Otherwise, you will go insane. Um, my advice to a young black woman climbing the stairs of the ivory tower, and this forced me to kind of go back and think about graduate school. Um, and when I think about that question, these are my answers as they're buried. You want to surround yourself with allies, people that are going to talk you up, not tear you down. You want to seek a mentor within and or outside of your department. There was no black woman in my department of political science. So I had to go outside of my department. Go to conferences. That's yet another opportunity. I think within our discipline, graduate students and even this cohort, we end up mentoring ourselves as we go through our respective programs. And oftentimes, we met each other at these conferences. When Anja Marie was at Yale, I had this sort of ladies' luncheon. So at the time that she was at Yale, there was a, a group of black women in this northeastern region that were in, they were all newly hired and untenured in the discipline of political science. And I would invite them over to my house. And we had lunch. We sp spent the whole day there, you know, talking, sharing our stories. And that was very helpful and in, in sort of uplifting my spirit and reminding me of why I pursued this career and took this path. Lastly, is that my time? Oh, okay. <laughs> Lastly, um, be visible. Don't make the mistake of just going to class and going home. Okay? Be visible. Play an active role in your department. That might be, that might mean taking on um, some active role in student government. The Political Science Graduate Student Association that existed in my department. Also the Black Graduate Association that existed on my campus as I went to graduate school at Purdue University, which is ultra conservative, um, very Republican um, university. Um, visit professors during office hours. Do not be afraid to ask questions. When in doubt, ask questions. Move beyond sort of your comfort zone. It's easy to go to class and go home and try and put that department, your colleagues or your classmates, out of your minds. But I would insist that you want to make your presence known and be visible versus invisible. And so, I'll see if I have time for one more. Do you consider your scholarship to be a political act? At the time in which I went to graduate school, and I started graduate school in 96, it was not popular, it was not sexy, it was not considered wise to study the intersection of race and gender. In fact, I was told I would not have a job. I was strongly discouraged, and I made, as well as the other women on this panel, I think we all made a conscious, deliberate choice to study African-American women. That is the intersection between race, sex, class, et al. Despite discouragement, dis despite the negative feedback, and it meant we were willing to take a risk and do that which we love or inspired by or feel impassioned about. You could opt to follow the mainstream or what is hot and popular at the time. I think it's more important to thy own self be true. And I think I will stop there. <laughs>